Let's take a look at this problem together. I'll begin by reading the actual question. So the question states, aqueous sulfuric acid will react with solid sodium hydroxide to produce aqueous sodium sulfate in liquid water. Suppose 79.4 grams of sulfuric acid is mixed with 29 grams of sodium hydroxide. Calculate the maximum mass of sodium sulfate that could be produced by the chemical reaction. Now, when we read through this, what we're told are what the reactants are, and then also the products, sodium sulfate and water. So for us to start this problem, the very first thing that we would wanna do is we want to go ahead and write out what the balanced chemical equation is going to be. So first things first, we're told our reactants are sulfuric acid, so that's upper H, sub two, upper S, upper O, sub four, and then its state is aqueous. And then that is going to react with sodium hydroxide, which is going to be upper N, A, upper O, upper H, and that is solid. That will then produce the products of sodium sulfate. So that's upper N, A, sub two, upper S, upper O, four. And we're told this is aqueous as well. And along with that, we are going to produce water, which is upper H, sub two, O, and we're told this is a liquid. And so to be able to balance out this chemical equation, what we'll need to do is we'll need to put in a two for our sodium hydroxide, and then also a coefficient of two in front of our water. And so again, what we have here is one mole of sulfuric acid reacts with two moles of sodium hydroxide to produce one mole of sodium sulfate and two moles of water. So in our question, we're told here that we are going to have 79.4 grams of sulfuric acid. So let me just write that mass down here of 79.4 grams underneath sulfuric acid so that we know that that's what we're starting with. Along with that, um, we're also told that we have 29 grams of the sodium hydroxide so we have 29 grams of sodium hydroxide. So the next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to figure out based off of each of these particular reactants. So again, based off of our um, mass of sulfuric acid and mass of sodium hydroxide, how much of this product sodium sulfate we're going to produce. So this is what we're looking for. Because we are given two masses of reactants, we need to determine which of these two will control the amount of product that's going to be formed. So first thing that we're gonna to need to do after balancing the equation is we're going to determine the limiting reactant. Now there are multiple ways to solve for the limiting reactant. So the method that we're going to use in this video is what we're going to do is we're going to start with the mass of our given reactant. And then we're going to convert that to moles of the given reactant. And then from there, we're going to convert it to the moles of the product that we want. Because the question is asking for the maximum mass, we're gonna go ahead and convert the moles of sodium sulfate to grams, or another way you can think of it as mass, of sodium sulfate. So let's start by using the first value that we're given, which is the mass of sulfuric acid. So we are given that there are 79.4 grams of sulfuric acid, so that's H2SO4. Now to be able to convert from grams or mass of our reactant, H2SO4, sulfuric acid, 
to moles of that given reactant, sulfuric acid, we're going to need to use the molar mass as a conversion factor. Because I have the units of grams in the numerator, in my conversion factor, I'm going to have to put the units of grams in the denominator. So in the denominator, I'm going to go ahead and use 98.08 grams of H2SO4 in my conversion factor. And then in the numerator, I'm going to use one mole of H2SO4. Now, if we carefully look at this again, what we're trying to do is we are going to be canceling out units. So I'm canceling out the grams of H2SO4. And then what I have remaining is what's in the numerator of moles of H2SO4 as my units. Now, in my next part of this calculation, I'm going to have to convert from moles of my given reactant to moles of sodium sulfate. So again, let's go ahead and put in our conversion factor. Because I have moles of sulfuric acid in the numerator, I'm going to need to put moles of sulfuric acid also in the denominator. What I'll need to use is the mole ratio. So now if we look at our balanced equation, the mole ratio of sulfuric acid to sodium sulfate is one to one. So again, to cancel out the moles of sulfuric acid, that's gonna go into the denominator. So that's moles of H2SO4. So one mole of H2SO4 in the denominator. And then to convert that to sodium sulfate, I'm gonna use one mole of Na2SO4 in the numerator. So again, we are going to strike out all of the units that, that cancel. So my moles of sulfuric acid in the numerator for the previous conversion factor will cancel out with the moles of sulfuric acid in the denominator. Now, the next part of this, we're gonna to have to convert from moles of sodium sulfate to mass or grams of sodium sulfate. So what we'll need to use here is the molar mass. So I'm gonna use the molar mass of sodium sulfate and Again, what we have in the numerator so far is the moles of sodium sulfate. So in the denominator, I'm going to have to put in one mole of sodium sulfate. And then of course, the mass for one mole of sodium sulfate, which is 142.04 grams of Na2SO4. What we'll now need to do is use our calculator and then determine the mass of sodium sulfate that's produced. So I'm taking my 79.4 grams of sulfuric acid. I'm gonna divide that by 98.08 grams per mole of sulfuric acid. And because of it being a one-to-one -one ratio, um, I'll multiply by one and then um, divide by one. And then I'm going to multiply by the molar mass of 142.04. And then what I find is that my mass works out to 114.9875-20391 grams of Na2SO4. What we'll need to consider here is the correct number of sig figs. So if we look at our sulfuric acid, this number has three sig figs. Our molar mass here has four sig figs. The mole ratio, these are exact numbers, so we don't have to worry about that. And then the molar mass of the sodium sulfate here has five sig figs. Our final answer is going to be dependent upon the mass that we're given. So we are going to round to 115 grams of sodium sulfate. So again, based upon the 79.4 grams of sulfuric acid, we should be able to produce 115 grams of sodium sulfate. Now that's only based off of one reactant. We now need to consider the other reactant that we're given. So the other reactant that we're given is sodium hydroxide. So again, what we're given here is that for sodium hydroxide, we're given 29 grams of NaOH. We're going to need to convert this, again, from grams of our reactant to moles of our reactant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. So in the denominator, 
we're putting 40.00 grams of NaOH. And in the numerator, um, because it's the molar mass, it's one mole of NaOH. So again, to cancel out my units, canceling out my grams of NaOH, and then I have my moles of NaOH, which is in the numerator. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the mole ratio from our balanced equation. My mole ratio here is two moles of sodium hydroxide is gonna be needed for one mole of um, sodium sulfate to be produced. So in the denominator, again, to cancel out moles of NaOH, I'm putting two moles of NaOH in my denominator of my conversion factor. And then I'm putting one mole of Na2SO4 in the numerator of my conversion factor. This now allows me to cancel out my moles of sodium hydroxide. And then the last step here is I need to convert my moles of sodium sulfate to, to mass or grams of sodium sulfate. So again, to cancel out these moles of sodium sulfate, I'm gonna put one mole of sodium sulfate in the denominator of my conversion factor and put its molar mass of 42.04 grams of sodium sulfate in the numerator. Now, looking at this, um, my moles of sodium sulfate will cancel and then we just need to calculate. I'll take 29 and then I'll divide that by 40. And then again, my mole ratio is no longer one to one. So I have one mole of sodium sulfate, so I'm multiplying by one, per two moles of sodium hydroxide, so I divide by two, and then I multiply all of this by the molar mass of sodium sulfate, and I get my answer of 51.4895. So again, what we need to consider are significant figures. So I am given 29 grams, so that's two sig figs. My molar mass of sodium hydroxide has four sig figs, and my molar mass of sodium sulfate has five sig figs. So this will work out to 51 grams of Na2SO4. When I have 79.4 grams of sulfuric acid, I'm able to produce 115 grams of sodium sulfate. However, when I have 29 grams of sodium hydroxide, I'm only able to produce 51 grams of sodium sulfate. My 29 grams of sodium hydroxide actually ends up limiting how much sodium sulfate I'm able to produce. So sodium hydroxide is going to be our limiting reactant. Now our limiting reactant controls the amount of product that we can produce. So the maximum amount of product that we are going to be able to produce here of the sodium sulfate is going to be 51 grams. And again, this is based on mass of our sodium hydroxide. 